At this point, we know that if we have one of the acute angles in a right triangle, that is, one of the two angles that are less than 90 degrees, then we can determine any of the trig ratios simply by using the trig buttons on our calculator and the angle. But what if we want to go the other way, that is, ratios to angles? Well, it's time to learn about inverse trig functions. On a calculator, these inverse functions are typically found right above the trig functions as a second function. That is, you typically have to click shift and then the trig button. To get inverse sine, sometimes called arc sine, we would hit shift and then the sine button. And same with the cos and tan. We would hit shift and then the button to get to the inverse function. Example one, if the sine ratio of an angle, let's call that angle theta, is 0 0.5, then what is theta? So we're solving for theta, or we can look at this problem as if we need to isolate the variable. And in this case, the variable is theta. So how do we isolate theta, or get it all by itself on the left here? Well, we're currently signing the theta, and the opposite of signing, the inverse, is inverse sine. Now, whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. So on the left, we have the inverse sine and the sine will cancel each other out. Perfect, it's isolated. On the right, we have to figure out what the inverse sine of 0 0.5 is. So we go to our calculator and we inverse sine 0 0.5. Again, this is commonly done by something like shift sine to get the inverse sine and then enter 0 0.5 and then hit your enter button or your equals button and we get 30 degrees. So the angle theta is 30 degrees. Now, do we have a way to check this? Well, sure, if we sign our new angle, that is 30 degrees, we should get back to our ratio of 0 0.5. So to our calculator, sign, and in this case, we put in 30, and we get 0 0.5. So excellent. We've shown that our statement is true. That sine of theta, in this case 30, gives us the ratio of 0 0.5. Example 2. Determine the x in this triangle. Well, first we have to check that this is a right triangle before we can use any trig with it. And yep, we have our 90 degrees here, so we're free to use our trig ratios. Second, let's identify the sides. Now the x will be our reference angle, which would make the seven the adjacent side, beside the reference angle. And the eight would be the hypotenuse, across from the 90 degrees. And the leftover side here would be the opposite. Now, our goal here is to solve for the x, so we have to include the x in our trig ratio. And we can't have any other unknowns, so we'll have to include our adjacent and hypotenuse in our trig ratio. Which ratio would accomplish all this? Let's think. Sokotoa. And we need a ratio with adjacent and hypotenuse. And that would be the cosine ratio. Cosine equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Or cos of x, our angle, is equal to 7 over 8. Now, we need to isolate the x. And on the left, we're cosigning the x. 
the opposite of that is the inverse cosine. Now, whatever we do to the left, we also have to do to the right. The inverse cos and the cos cancel out, leaving the x by itself. Perfect. And on the right, we're left with the inverse cos of 7 over 8. Now, to solve this on most calculators, you would press shift, then cos, and that brings up your inverse cos, and then you could put in 7 over 8 and hit enter. Now, some people would be more comfortable with dividing 7 over 8 and then inverse cosigning the result. Either way is fine, and it depends a bit on your calculator's format. But in the end, you should be getting 28.96, or rounding a little bit, 29 degrees. In this tutorial, we learned about inverse trig functions. Prior to this, we had gotten pretty good at going from angles to ratios using the trig functions. In this tutorial, we learned how to go backwards from ratios to angles. Now on our calculator, we find our trig ratio buttons and most often the inverse trig buttons are right above them, requiring a shift or a second button to access them. If we're given an angle and we need to determine the trig ratio, we use the trig buttons. If we're given a trig ratio and we need to determine the angle, then we use the inverse trig buttons.